Hi, I'm Melissa Ostefeld and I love making slime. Today I'm going to be making slime on USA Kids Today Next Generation. Hi, I'm Melissa Osterbelt. I'm here on USA Kids Today Next Generation to show you guys how to make slime. I love slime. There's so many different types of slime, but today I'm going to show you how to make clear slime. So you want to get your clear glue. Take the lid off. Just make sure you get it all out into your bowl. So we need the clear slime base, just so we can get it all out, so we can make the jelly cube slime. So you pour all your clear glue out, then you can add the color that you want, or you can just keep it clear. So I'm going to make red slime. Now when you put your coloring in, whether you're making clear slime or regular slime, you don't want to add too much because then it'll stain your hands. So you just want to make sure you mix it all up. You can use any kind of food coloring. You can even use paint, but sometimes like after a while the paint goes hard in your slime. So then like it just kind of clumps up. So I just like to use regular food coloring. You can also use markers too, or pigments. But. So now we're going to add our sponges. You can just use regular sponges. You can get clear sponges, but I'm just going to use the color that I'm making my slime. You just want to cut it into little squares. You don't have to add a lot. Just kind of add as many as you want. I'm just going to put cut the sponge part off of there. Just cut little cubes and put them in there. You can do whatever color you want. I just like pink and red's pretty close. Okay, I just went in there. So you also kind of want to leave your slime a little bit sticky because the cubes tend to not stay in there as well if it's not like really sticky. You can have these in after you make your slime too, but I find that it's just easier to add them before when you're mixing everything up. It can be a little hard to cut. So I've got about seven in there, and that's how many that I would like. So now you take whatever activator you use. Today I'm going to be using borax, and I put it in a little container so it's easier. When you um, make borax, you want to be very careful since it has chemicals in it. You want to, I use about half a teaspoon to a cup of hot water warm water and then you can also use contact lens solution which I also use sometimes so you want to add your activator in slowly because you don't want to add too much at the same time otherwise it's gonna get over activated and that's not what you want so you just want to mix it for a little while then put some more in it so when you're like, once your slime gets bad or you just don't want it anymore, when you get rid of it, you want to make sure you don't put this down the drain because it will clog the drain and then you won't be able to make slime again probably. And 
You also don't want to like throw it out in the yard because some make it step in that. So to me, the best way to get rid of it is I just put it in the trash. You might want to put it in like a baggie when you throw it away so that it like doesn't get all over the trash and stuff. But you don't want to keep it in like a warm area because then it will um, like it'll melt the slime and then you will like have to add more activator or you could put it in the fridge. But you don't want to keep it somewhere that's really cold too because then it gets like hard. So you just want to like keep mixing. You want to make sure you get all of it. See it's starting to clump up and get its reaction. So you want to slowly keep adding your activator. You can also use laundry detergent, but I found that it doesn't work as well. Plus, like, if you're trying to make clear slime, unless you have clear laundry detergent, it's going to, like, dye your slime if you wanted it to, like, be clear and not have a color. So you just want to keep adding. And it will start to bubble, but you just kind of want to let it, like, sit for a couple of days and, like, let it clear up if you like really care, you know? So you can go in with your hands now if you want. But you wanna make sure whenever you're mixing any slime that you always keep one hand clean because you need to add more borax when you're mixing sometimes or you might have to add more glitter or something. And you know, it's gonna get all over your stuff. You can also add glitter to this too but I didn't really want to. You also don't have to add color, it's optional. But you just wanna like make sure you get it all mixed up. Another thing to keep in mind with the borax is that um, if you have warm hands, you're not gonna wanna have kinda sticky slime because your hands like can melt the slime, which is not what you want. So you just might wanna overactivate it just a tiny bit. Like, I have warm hands, so. Now, I'm just going to keep kneading this because sometimes it takes a while for, like, it to get that reaction where it turns into slime. So you just kind of want to keep kneading it for a little while without adding more borax because you don't know if you're going to really need it or not. So you just want to keep mixing. I think I might need a little bit more. It's also very good to keep like a towel around or paper towels if you can't use a regular towel. Just that you can wipe your hands off if you do have to go in with two hands like I did to make sure you fully need it. So I'm just gonna keep adding my borax. You just wanna go slowly. You can't, you don't really wanna rush it. So when you're like putting it away, when you're done with it or when you're done making it, you want to put it in like, I like to use containers like those because it's easier to get like them out plus it's easier, like you can just play with it in there. So you just want to kind of keep mixing so you get that texture that you like. Personally, I really like jelly cube slime. I mean, it doesn't really look clear right now because it's so bubbly, but it'll start to clear up. Plus, like, keep in mind, the more that you play with it, the less clear it's gonna be. So just add your borax or your activator. Personally, I like using borax more I know some kids have been getting like burns from it, but you just need to follow the right recipe. But borax makes the slime kind of stretchier in my opinion, but I mean if you want to be on the safe side if, or if your parents don't feel comfortable letting you use borax, you can just use contact lens solution because you know that it can be safe for your hands if you could use it in your eyes, you know. Or there's also detergent, but... a little bit. So 
sometimes it's good like if you have like a towel that you can use for slime only so that like maybe if you have like an old towel or something that you don't like has rips in it or something just like dedicate that as your slime towel sometimes it takes a little bit for it to come together which I mean you just kinda have to be patient with it just let it do what it's doing I personally like using little bottles like this for activator because since borax comes in a box like that, you c like you could use it in a cup, but that is easy to carry around, like a bottle like that. Plus, it kind of um, like it doesn't let you put a ton in at a time. It kind of like slows it down a little bit when it comes out. So you just want to keep mixing it all up. But, I mean, you can always add your own little twists on slime. Like, also, for measurements, for me, I just used the whole bottle. So, I mean, like, it's not really like a cup or anything. Like, if you just get a bottle, just, like, use it all. But for this, you just add whatever glue you have, and then you just put your borax in it or your activator still pretty sticky so I'm just going to keep adding more slowly. Always want it to be slowly. And you can add more jelly cubes than I added because I didn't add that much. But I just use regular um, sponges but you can really use whatever. Like they have special white sponges and like some people dye the sponges the color of their slime. But to me, if like you already have a regular sponge like that and it's the color of your slime, nobody's really gonna even notice. But there's like special white sponge that you could get. I don't use the bottom part of the slime, I mean the sponge like that because it kind of gives it like Sometimes some of like the fur or whatever that's on the bottom of that, it kind of comes off into the slime. So it's done now. So you want to just try to get everything out of your bowl so that you don't have any extra stuff in there. Just add that to your slime. It, I find it easier if you use a bowl that kind of has like less of a rim at the bottom because sometimes it can be hard to like steer it. So yeah, here is our jelly cube slime. You can just play with it how you want. But yeah, like I said, you might just want to let it clear up for a couple of days. And then all these little bubbles will come out and it won't look so, you know, like this. It'll be more clear. You can also add water, too, if you want. Sometimes if you accidentally overactivate it, like this, I might have overactivated a little bit because it's not that sticky. But all you have to do is add lotion to it or water. I like adding lotion because water tends to make it like more stickier, but it'll also get stretchier. So you just want to add some lotion. It doesn't matter what kind of lotion. I'm just using regular body lotion, but you can use like hand lotion or some other types. want to fully knead, knead that in and sometimes like the sponges will kind of like break apart in your slime
it's pretty clear. I don't want to get that off your hands. So this is just your basic jelly cube slime. You can twist it up any way you want, like add confetti or different types of like sparkles or anything else, just to give it your own little twist. So yeah, thanks for watching. Don't get too sticky. Next up, a USA Kid Today blast from the past. We're going back in time with the original USA Kids Today cast as they learn about the Soapbox Derby. It's life in the fast lane. Today on News Tickets, today we'll be taking a look at the history of the Soapbox Derby. The Soapbox Derby is an American tradition that started right here in Dayton back in 1933. We'll learn how to build a soapbox stock car and even meet some of the drivers that competed in the race last year. So, let's go where it all starts, the annual Soapbox Derby kickoff. Every year, usually during the month of March, the Greater Dayton Derby Optimist Club holds its annual derby kickoff and registration for the year begins. At the kickoff, derby officials are on hand to answer all your questions about how you can get started in derby racing. There are cars from each division on display. Holly and I and Chris Crumley, another reporter for USA Kids Today, went to the kickoff where we tried some of the cars out for size. We got a feel for what it's like to maneuver inside a racer and took a look at some of the mechanical workings of the cars. Outside, various law enforcement vehicles were on display. There were police cruisers, surveillance units, state highway patrol cars, a car from the D.A.R.E. program, and the Vandalia Police Department had their crime prevention van there. <gasps> cool! There's McGrath the Crime Dog. What are you guys doing to his nose? We're doing the scratch and sniff test. What's it smell like? Come on, guys. I'm trying to tell my story. We took a look inside the police surveillance unit and saw all kinds of equipment police used to watch criminal suspects. We jumped into a patrol car and imagined what it would be like to take off in hot pursuit of a suspect. We checked out the radio equipment, sirens, and um, some reading material. Mmm. Muscle fitness. Very interesting. Yeah, hunka, hunka. We also tried our hand at taking a prisoner into custody. Yeah, we charged Chris with grand theft sweater snatching. See you later, Chris. The Derby kickoff date is posted in your local newspaper or contact your area chamber of commerce and they can put you in touch with a local derby representative. Registration takes place up until mid-June. Next, 
He went to Wright Pat Air Force Base where inspections and practice runs were held. Hello, I'm Courtney Cunningham. I'm Chris Crumley from USA Kids Today. And we're here with Mike Martinez at the Soapbox Derby pre-race inspection. Hello. Hi, how you doing? Fine. Yeah, basically what this is, this is just uh, a, what we call a mandatory practice run for the drivers. Uh, they need to bring their vehicles here and they need to get them inspected to make sure they're safe. Uh, we don't want them anybody going down this hill on a practice run and getting a wreck. Uh, and then they have to go down the hill at least once if they're a veteran driver and twice if they're a new driver to, to demonstrate to the, uh, the uh, board directors, that, uh, the race directors, that they are qualified to race down down the hill on race day on July 13th. So that's pretty much what we're doing here today. They bring the driver, the cars in, they're inspected by uh, well, our inspectors, and then they get in line and they just wait for their turn to get their practice run. Okay, do you have a lot of kids who enter every year? This year we have approximately uh, 66 drivers, uh, both in what we call stock and super stock divisions. Uh, and you'll kind of get an idea as to which is which, but uh, we've got 66 drivers. That's more than we've ever had in about the last 10 years. How long has the race been going on? Well, it started here in Dayton, I guess, back in third, 1933. Uh, the actual race is held over on Burkhart Hill uh, here on the east side of Dayton. Uh, for a period of time, it came out here to Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, where this practice run is, and now they're back at Burkhart Hill. So it's been around for some time, and each year it's, it's grown, and uh, this year, like I said, it's our best year ever. Do you have, like, an age limit to enter? Uh, for the stock division, uh, they have to be 9 to 16 years old, and the super stock division, 10 to 16 years old. So definitely when you reach the age of 16, you're pretty much done. Hi, I'm here with Mark Mehal. He's one of the inspectors that spe inspects the cars that are in the derby. Can you tell us what is the inspecting process? Yes, uh, this particular car is a super stock model. There are two cars in the race as far as models. The stock, which is a basic car for drivers generally from 9 to 11 years old, and the super stock is uh, for drivers anywhere from 9 to 16 years old. The super stock has a bigger uh, weight limit on the car. It also has a bigger cockpit opening. What we're trying to do is ensure that the um, all the cars are uniform as far as design and also as safe as we can get them. What do you look for when you're expecting the car? What we have here is a sheet that is used by the All-American Soapbox Derby. It's a copy. It's to ensure fairness and safety for the entrance. There's probably about 25 areas that we look for to make sure that all the cars are uniform as far as per plan and safety. First of all, I'm looking for the cross section of the car, which is measured in this area here in front of the cockpit. I'm looking to make sure that there is no distortion, that the car is basically flush, none of the sides are bowed out. I make sure that the brake plunger is easily engageable. All the components are per plan. In this particular case, I'm glad we found it now, that the eye bolt's ready to fall off the brake cable. Okay, the brake pad also needs to be retightened. Next, I'm going to be looking for the profile of the car, which is basically the appearance, the lettering, and the decorations. The lettering cannot be in the front part of the car. We're looking for about the first three or four inches clean. The reason for that is because there's a photoelectric eye at the finish line. Any distortion in the front of the car may prematurely set off that photoelectric eye. But next, we're making sure that all the cars uniformly look the same. This car has passed all those requirements. The next we're looking next we're looking for the wind to die down and I'm going to check the wheelbase. We have to take a break now. But we'll be right back to talk with kids who experience life in the fast lane after this.
While walking in a toy store the day before today, I overheard a crayon box with many things to say. I don't like red, said yellow, and green said nor do I. And no one here likes orange, but no one knows just why. Well, I bought that box of crayons and took it home with me and drew with all the colors so the crayons could all see. That each of us is special and everyone's unique, but it's when we get together that... The picture is complete! USA Kids Day will be back. Quick as you can pull a rabbit out of the hat. Oh, we'll be back even sooner than that. Hi, Courtney and I are at Ashley Marchek's house, and Ashley is a first-time entrant in the Soapbox Derby. Ashley, I understand that you built your car from scratch. Yeah. Actually, what was involved in, in assembling the car and getting the parts? We had to go up to Akron to get every part. We had lunch up there. We brought the car up there. Then we came home, and then me and Dad put the stuff on the table. Everything you see on this table came in a box. Then a couple days after that, we started building the car. And this is the steering wheel to steal. Thanks, Ashley. Good luck at the race. We'll see you there. Now I'm here with some of the drivers. I'll let them introduce themselves. I'm Ray McGoa. Devin Daniels. Eddie Estelle. I'm Paul Jones. Ashley Larchak. Adrian Thomas. Are you having fun so far? Yeah. Is it fun making your car? Uh, I, actually, I didn't make my car. We already we got our car made. And do you think you're going to win? No. <laughs> Do you think you're going to win? Of course. Did you place in last year's race? First. Well, that's really good. What did you place? Third. Do a lot of other girls participate in this race? I don't know, but from what I heard, a lot of girls win. <laughs> what division are you in? Stock. Stock. Super stock. Super stock. Stock. Okay. We're in this. Do you think the race is going to be fun? Yeah. Is this your first year? Yep. Do you think you're going to win? Yeah. What's your name? Robbie. How old are you? Ten. Did you have help building this car or not? Yes, I did. Uh, how many hours do you practice a day? Mm, it's about three or four. Did you have help building this car? Yes, I did. Do you think it was hard building it? Yes, it was very hard. All right. Does it go very fast, do you think? I think so. All right. What's your name? Chris. Chris, 
Did you have hope building this car? Yeah. Do you think you're the best on the hill? Yeah. How many, is this your first year? Yeah. What speeds are these cars capable of going to? About 30 miles an hour. All right, what do you think the cars are capable of going up to? Anywhere from 25 to 30. The first place winner in both divisions, stock and super stock, will receive an expense paid trip to Derby Camp in Akron, Ohio, and be entered into the annual running of the All-American Soapbox Derby. A week at Derby Camp starts with a grand welcoming ceremony. At camp, there are all kinds of recreational activities, including swimming, horseback riding, sports, lots of festivities, and a parade all leading up to the big race day. The All-American Soapbox Derby is held in August, and champions from all divisions will compete for scholarships and merchandise prizes. Sounds like a great time. about the Soapbox Derby. If you'd like more information, we'll put the address and an 800 number on the screen at the end of the show. Did we mention how the Soapbox Derby got started? Back in 1933, a reporter from the Dayton Daily News named Myron E. Scott wrote an article about kids racing homemade carts down the street. Carts made out of soapboxes? Yes. A street with a hill like Burkhart here in Dayton? That's right. And that August in 1933, the very first Soapbox Derby race was held. And 60 years later, they're still racing there. You mean this whole thing got started just because of what a bunch of kids were doing? That doesn't surprise me, Laura, does it? Not, no, not at all. I mean, what's a USA Kids Today motto say? Kids can make a difference. Kids are really smart. Kids have really great ideas, and kids can do a lot. Need I say more? That concludes our episode of USA Kids Today. See you next time on USA Kids Today. Bye. USA Kids Today is a program produced for kids, by kids, about kids, with the aid of dedicated volunteers who encourage kids to get involved and do their best. The kids who participate in the production are not paid professionals. USA Kids Today's purpose is to introduce kids to career opportunities in television production and broadcast.
If you would like to know more about USA Kids Today and how you can participate, write USA Kids Today, 4861 Leesboro Drive, Dayton, Ohio, 45424, with your name, address, and phone number. USA Kids Today uses the facilities at DATV. USA Kids Today is a new view video production. Please things differently.